In the heart of stock car country in Southern Virginia is the unlikely home of one of America's finest road circuits. Just a few miles from South Boston Speedway down Route 58 sits the remarkable Virginia International Raceway. It's getting on 25 years now since the Virginia International Raceway was revived into what we know it as today. Paul Newman's aptly named Heaven on Earth host racing nearly every day these days with track days and testing, never mind the SCCA and IMSA series, making yearly visits to the facility. When you see the circuit these days, it's hard to imagine that it sat dormant for almost a quarter century and nearly never came back. The circuit itself has a troubled history. It began its life as a group of sports car enthusiasts were looking for a place to create their own racing facility. The patch of farmland between Danville and South Boston, Virginia was picked for its rolling hills. One of the circuit's creators claimed that the circuit nearly created itself with the tarmac being laid directly over the existing terrain. The circuit opened in 1957 and quickly held an SCCA race, attracting stars such as Carol Shelby, Carl Haas, and Walt Hanskin, amongst others, to the circuit. Carol Shelby was quoted as saying, one lap at VIR is like a hundred at Watkins Glen, and VIR was certainly a long circuit. At 3.27 miles, it was one of the longest permanent road course facilities in the United States up until this time. But the circuit immediately fell into financial trouble. Stock car fans of Virginia simply weren't coming out to the road races. A new owner picked up the circuit and tried to hold different types of events throughout the 60s with motorcycles and carts and different sports cars racing the circuit. This culminated with IMSA GT sports car racing in 1971. But although it felt like the circuit had hit its stride, unfortunately the fuel crisis of 1973 put the final nail in the coffin and the track closed down seemingly for good. The circuit could have easily gone the way of Bridgehampton and faded away into the memories of an older generation, but luckily it was brought back to life and we know VIR today as one of the premier road racing venues in the United States. And luckily for us, a new version of the Virginia International Raceway has come out for Grand Prix Legends today, actually. This was released by Janetto and Paul, with a few others helping out with various parts, and it's an absolutely beautiful circuit. It aims to recreate VIR in the mid to late 60s, so this would have been before, obviously, the track was picked back up in 1998 and turned into the resort. Um, Janetto and team used photos, videos, maps, and elevation data to try to make the circuit as accurate as possible, and they did a great job. The circuit itself is very similar to how it is today. Uh, really, the main difference is that it was more narrow back in the 50s and 60s, as many circuits were. So it's a little tighter uh, to race around the track. There's no curbing to help you out in many places that it exists today. But the layout itself is very familiar for anybody that races at VIR. And it's great to have an awesome version of this in Grand Prix Legends. So I wanted to do a race to try out the circuit, and I thought it would be fun to take out the truly unruly 1971 Can-Am cars, since I don't get to race them that much. And today I want to drive the Lola T260, uh, mainly because it's a car I haven't driven much, but also has a tie to Carl Haas, who raced at the circuit in its inaugural event, like I was saying. So the Lola T260 was Carl Haas's entry into the 1971 Can-Am series, and was driven by Jackie Stewart, and there was a lot of news made about that. The car itself fits the Can-Am spec of being outrageous. It was powered by a Chevrolet V8, turning out 720 brake horsepower at 6,600 RPM. So low revving, high power, just four gears in the gearbox. Uh, but the most notable thing about this car was how narrow and stubby it was. It was a really short car, really narrow car, especially compared to the McLaren, which was its main competition. But having Jackie behind the wheel was a really exciting time for Can-Am. And Jackie Stewart was actually able to win two of the races that season in both round two at Montremblant and uh, round five at Mid-Ohio. The Can-Am series didn't race at VIR in 1971, but I feel like it's very similar to a lot of the tracks they would have raced on and maybe had the circuit been in better financial standing, uh, they would have actually raced there too. So I want to do this, just a short race, eight laps around the circuit, uh, starting from the rear of the grid, see if I can hold on here in my Lola T260. So here we are on the grid, a lot of cars in front, so it's going to be a slow start here, but flag is up. 
down, we're underway. Just trying to get off the line, harness the horsepower, scoot around a couple of these cars. Oh, so we'll now try to get towards the first corner, but the whole field checking up in front. Got one car flying around the inside. See if it, maybe I can do the same. Stack into line here. Oh, a few cars piled up on the inside there. One of the McLarens stopped. I think it actually broke down. All right, able to get through the first corner. Cold tires in the first couple of laps. These cars are so hard to handle. This one specifically, compared to maybe the McLaren Ultra Twitchy, will come through. There was NASCAR bend behind us. Come through this left and right hander, I think called the Snake. Exactly the same as it is today, just a little more narrow. With these cars being so wide, makes it a little tricky. I'm trying to get on the power as we head towards the S's. Try not to go too much above 7,000 RPM. We'll keep it in third gear for the S's first time through. Top of the hill then, down a second pretty tight corner and with the tires on the inside you can absolutely not cut it but now come up to oak tree for the first time oak tree of course standing in this version as it would have done for many years after this but we'll sneak it up the inside through oak tree trying to get on the power for the back straightaway car in front able to do a little bit better but we'll slipstream him here should have a little more horsepower i'd imagine there we go fourth gear hill there you can get a little bit of air and then heavy braking for the top of roller coaster easy to run deep here there's a lot of little elevation changes coming in the braking zone into roller coaster oh, we'll come up the inside then passing a car come to the bottom of the lap to the end of the lap here bottom of the hill just tentatively on the throttle there come complete the first of eight a whole bunch of cars off the line that McLaren breaking down in the first corner helped a little bit with that we'll have to see what the position is after this lap get it down to first gear for turn one oh, I think it's Vic Alford in front of me caught to NASCAR bend believe named because Richard Petty if I'm not mistaken ran off the circuit there slow behind these cars. This car can go much quicker. The teeny tiny steering wheel in front of me. Get on the throttle under the overpass there. And into the S's again. We'll just stay in line. It's really not a place to pass up the hill. Love the detail in the tarmac. Ooh, leaves the door open on the inside. Alfred did. Down a second. We'll just give him a little bit of space there. There we go. Could have actually taken it, but I couldn't see him. Down a first gear for Oak Tree once again. But I love the detail in the pavement. I talk about this whenever I look at a new Grand Prix Legends track, but the sim does nothing for you when you're when you're thinking about the textures and lighting or how the track moves every single bump every single change everything has to be modeled by the creator of the circuit and so just seeing how accurate this is and it having bumps and tarmac changes is whoa, get a little close to the inside there try to do another sneaky move through the roller coaster oh side by side it's not really what you want to do. I'll keep in it. I think I'm a lot quicker than most of these guys. Everything about this, though, is great. A little bit of twitch there as I get on the throttle. Couldn't quite see the pit board. It's off the screen, but it's P6, or uh, six laps to go, P11 last time. So I think I passed two cars there, so up to P9. I'm down to first gear. Chasing now Joe Sifford, I think. This is one of the best mods for Grand Prix Legends as well. The uh, modeling work on the cars is outstanding. The way they drive is terrifying. A perfect combination for a circuit like this. Getting stacked up a bit through the snake here. Up to third gear though, under the overpass again. Just keep it in line. Maybe one of them will run wide again. We can take advantage. Oh, 
vociferate there, a little slow. You just see his helmet poking over the top of the rear wing, which is how I know it's him. Come down to first gear, then up to Oak Tree. Hopefully get a good exit here and can pass a couple of these guys on the straightaway. Ooh, he goes side by side. I think that's David Hobbs, actually, in the blue car. Up to third gear. They just pull away coming out of the corner. Fourth gear. All right, pulling back up on him now. Over the top of the rise. Just don't want to outbreak myself coming up to roller coaster. <laughs> car gets a little skatey. Able to slow it down, though, making the pass on Siffert. We'll come down the roller coaster, make my cheeky move there on Hobbs. We'll touch the outside of the circuit. Not an issue. Just baby the throttle through there. Then when you get on the horsepower, you can just feel the V8 kick in behind you. The raw acceleration in these cars is insane. Come down to first gear for turn one. Leaves the inside open, I'll take that, no problem. He saw me coming, knows I'm a lot quicker in this T260. All right, come up to NASCAR. Try not to make a fool of ourselves. And I think I got Sam Posey in front of me. The commentator, of course, was a sports car racer for many years. to the S's. Work our way up the hill. Second gear. Easy corner to run wide there, but you got plenty of runoff. You just lose a ton of time. It's one of the nice things about this track and probably what makes it great for having a school. Oh, Posey's so slow in the apex. Backs me up, gets good acceleration off. I see how it is, Sam. But it's one of the things I think that makes this a good track for teaching racing and having people do track days is there is a lot of area to run off. You can certainly get in trouble, but you have a fair chance of surviving most minor incidents without too much of an issue. All right, get Sam up the inside through the roller coaster. <laughs> He's gonna squeeze me there. One keeps the inside coming out of the final corner. But right on him now in the front straightaway. Yeah, some P7 last time by with four more laps to go. it on the apex here into turn one. Try to get on the throttle a little sooner. There we go. Oh, and he hooks me. Oh, no. Slide off the circuit. Just try to get on the throttle to get the thing to stop. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> Sam spun me out. Oh, and he spun out as well. We'll get back on the circuit, but losing a ton of time. I don't think I'll have any damage. Maybe I ran up into him. We'll have to see. Let's try to recover here. It's just a fun race, but I uh, was looking forward to getting some clean track in front of him and really stretching the legs on this thing. All right, we'll come through the snake. Got a really slow car here in front. Probably lost six, seven spots. It seemed like half the field went by. Come to the top of the hill. Sam quite slow up there. Wonder if he blew a tire or something. We just scooted on in. Well, these two in front, they're gonna touch. Losing the rear end a bit on acceleration keeps you uh, keeps you thinking. This car. See if I can pass a few of these guys back here. I'm gonna pull up quite dramatically on these two, but too little, too late. Seems like they can really accelerate out of Oak Tree, and I just can't get the power down like that. There we go, through roller coaster up the inside. All right, easily able to make the first pass there. We got Sam now in front of me. Repeat a last lap, maybe. Oh, come around the outside though. the line. Come down 
out of turn one. Where is he going to go this time? Can I go around the outside, maybe? Here's the aerodynamics and grip. You can see the skid marks from the crash last time. I just saw him there on the right side for a second. There we go, around the inside into NASCAR. Oh, we're going to slide a little wide onto the grass, but able to stick in front of Sam or he sticks behind me, one or the other. All right. <laughs> A little bit messy of a pass with Sam Posey there. I feel like he described a lot of those types of reckless maneuvers in his commentary career. Nevertheless, focus on ahead. We have just a few laps to go to do it. Let's see if I can get back these positions that I lost. All right, second gear. Just try not to hit those tires. They absolutely murdered the suspension on the cars if you touch them. So that is one thing you can hit. Pulling back up on David Hobbs now. Flat out. up the brakes you can see as you get over the crest the car gets light coming into roller coaster and it's just so hard to break there using every bit of the circuit that I can Hobbs slow oh, almost touch him almost spitting myself out as well All right trying to get towards David Hobbs here so two laps to go I was in p9 last time by Position doesn't matter so much. It's a ton of fun driving these cars on this circuit. A lot of room to uh, explore. Around the outside of Hobbs, though. Getting down in second gear. Come up to NASCAR this time. Trying not to make a fool of myself again. There we go. On the power. Crank a lot of wheel into it coming in through the snake. Back up on Sifford here. I believe if I get in front of these two, I'll be where I was before Sam and I had that contact. The third gear come floated into the S's. Down to second at the top. here through Oak Tree. It's these two in front squabble. A little bit up the inside of Sifford. We'll get on the loud pedal. Dance the car on the accelerator. But quite close. If I have a higher top speed, I should be able to get him here in the slipstream. There we go. That's a little bit of a horsepower advantage, I'd say. Over the top of the crest there. And now it's a roller coaster. Heavy on the brakes. Slide the car in a little bit down to first from fourth. One car left in front here before some clear track. Get him in a roller coaster. Oh, he's going to stick there on the outside. Oh, all the way on the dirt. There, able to get him. Come through the final corner. All right. Come to the line. I think just one lap to go. Just trying to get a nice lap here. Oh, probably won't hit any traffic on this one. Down to first gear for the first turn. But this is a beautiful version of VIR. I'm very impressed with it. I don't think anybody knew this track was coming out. I certainly didn't. Just suddenly logged into the forums today and saw VIR, new version. It's not a circuit that we really need from a calendar perspective. There weren't, you know, any high profile series out, outside of IMSA in the early 70s racing here. So it's just a nice track to have. It's, I think, a cornerstone in American road racing from my perspective. Oh, we do have a car in front that I'm catching. We'll come into the S's a little bit faster this time. Third gear, just off the accelerator a little bit there and float it on through. Dance the car back and forth. Oh, a ton of fun in this car. A little bit wide there at that apex, but collect it anyway. Coming up on a McLaren. Interesting. This might have been the McLaren that crashed right at the beginning. I think it's a McLaren anyway. It's orange. Come down, you can actually see the start finish line a little bit off to the right for a second as you come out of Oak Tree. A nice touch. We'll come to the top of the hill here over the crest. Come down a roller coaster.
coaster for the final time. Second gear there. Oh, down to first, a little bit hot. Close right back in on this car in front. He's trying to get out of the way, I think. <laughs> it's going to make the end of this exciting. Oh, always difficult getting around the lap cars, but we'll cut through the final corner. Hopefully, no sparks. There we go, up the inside. But come to the line. Checkered flag waving. <laughs> Fun little race there around VIR. Awesome circuit. Really impressed with this. One thing that caught my eyes, too, uh, as I finished fifth, it looks like, which is great, but all the billboards on the sides of the track are very accurate to the time period. I'll try to grab some shots of those, maybe to maybe would have seen them already in the intro of the video or something, but really impressed with that. Uh, I thought the start finish structure and all that is really well done as, as well. It just gives you a good feeling of what the circuit absolutely looked like uh, back in these days. And the track itself, you know, very much the same shape uh, as it, all the material indicates, just narrower. This is probably the widest part of the circuit here, but once we got through the S's up, up top and go through the uh, the oak tree corner and everything. Really close circuit. Oh, Siffert has a little crash there in the uh, final lap. Oh, very exciting. Love these cars. Love racing around this circuit. So thanks again to Janetto and team for building this track great circuit to race on and it's not one like i said that we needed you know for it to complete some calendar or something but uh very much appreciated i think just having great circuits to race on i'm sure this would be a lot of fun online which a lot of folks love to do uh and just hot lapping here racing some cars in various mods and things definitely one of those tracks that would be fun to use as kind of a test track itself so hope everybody enjoyed seeing the circuit uh hope it, it shows a few people that it exists maybe they can go get it i'm happy it came out I was looking for something to record in, in Grand Prix Legends. It's been a little while since I've done something for one of my favorite Sims, but uh, a lot of fun. I appreciate everybody watching. I'll see you all again next time.